This video will look at screening using multiple data entry, or as it is commonly called, double screening. Please be sure to watch part one of the screening video, as that video will cover a number of topics that will only be briefly mentioned here. As mentioned in part one, screening is the process of deciding which studies found in your searches meet the review's inclusion criteria. The inclusion criteria are created based on the review's scope and question. We normally first screen the items based on title and abstract, and those that meet the inclusion criteria are then screened again using the full paper. For quality assurance purposes, two or more people will often independently screen the same items to be sure the exclusion criteria are being applied consistently. This is called double screening or multiple data entry. EPRI Viewer 4 supports multiple user data entry and will produce summary discrepancy reports and the functionality to help the users reconcile the disagreements. Using the same example as in Part 1, we have set up a screening tool based on a number of exclusion criteria. As well, we have also assigned all of the items an allocation code that we will use when creating a work assignment. We must first change the screening code set to allow multiple data entry. This is a property of the code set and can be changed in the Edit Code Set window. Click on Change to Multiple User Data Entry. There will be a message asking you to confirm that you want to do this. Multiple data entry implies that you will have multiple users coding the same item using the same code set and then reconciling the disagreements. Next, go to the Collaborate tab and we will set up a coding assignment. Click on Create New and for the Code Studies in this group option, pick the All Items code. For the Using this Code Set option, pick Screen on Title and Abstract and for the To this Person option, pick the person who will be doing the screening. Next, Create new again, make all of the same selections, but this time pick the other coder. The coding assignments are displayed in the table. In our example, we have assigned all of the items. In a review with many thousands of items to screen, it may be a good idea to allocate items in smaller batches. This will allow you to run intermediate comparisons to monitor progress, and if necessary, make adjustments to your coding tool. You can create smaller batches by having a number of allocation codes and making multiple work assignments. The users should now code their listed items by clicking on the remaining items. The two coders have now screened all of their allocated items. You can see that there are no more remaining items. We now want to create a comparison of how each reviewer has coded their items. This can be done by clicking on Create Comparison. Pick the name of the reviewers to compare, the code set that was used for coding, and the code that defines the items that you want to compare. In this case, it is the All Items Allocation Code. You can run a quick report to see how each screener coded each item in the comparison. To do this, click on Run in the Quick Report column, select the code set that should be in the report, and then click Run. The items are listed in rows and the screeners are in the columns. Note that this report is in HTML, so you could highlight, copy, and paste it into other programs such as Word or Excel. To see the statistics of the double screening, click on View in the Stats column. A summary of how many items are coded by each reviewer and the number of items coded by both reviewers is listed. The number of agreements and disagreements are listed as well. We now want to complete the agreements. This will take all of the items that were in agreement and mark the coding as complete. Once an item's coding is marked as complete, it becomes available to the program searching and reporting functions. In this example, two people have coded the items, so one of the two people will need to hold the agreed version of the coding. The person who clicks on the complete button becomes the owner of the agreed coding. In other words, their coding becomes the agreed coding. Let's click on complete to complete coding of the items in agreement. The next thing to do is to reconcile the disagreements. In this case, 3 out of 10 items were disagreements. If we click on the 3 out of 10, the 3 items are listed in the Documents tab. We can go into those 3 documents. The action of reconciling disagreements may vary depending on the process the reviewer decides to use. The decision might be made in consultation with the other coder, or the project leader might make the decision unilaterally. Either way, you can see how each person coded the items by turning on Live Comparison. This is done in the Coding Record tab. If you click on Live Comparison and select the code set to compare, the coding for each person will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. What the coder sees in the coding tool is their own selections. 
The person completing the item should make sure that their own coding displayed in the coding tool represents the agreed version. Now the coding for that item can be marked as complete. To do this, click on the red disk and the complete coding window will appear. Click on OK and the coding for that item and code set will be marked as complete. The person that marked the item as complete owns the coding for that item. It's their version of the coding that is the agreed version. Finish off the other two items and then return to the Documents tab. All of the agreements and disagreements for the allocated items have now been marked as complete. This means the coding for these items is available to the program searching and reporting functions. If we run a frequency report, we can see the agreed coding and identify the included items that will move forward in the review process. As described in part one of the screening video, we can now assign the excluded items the exclude flag, retrieve and upload the full text documents, allocate the included items for full text screening, and carry out the full text screening. The last point we want to look at is what happens when you want to edit coding that is marked as complete under multiple data entry but you are not the person that marked it as complete. Let's try this. If you go into the first item and go into the coding record, we can see that the coding for this item under the screen on title and abstract code set was marked as complete by Stephen. The user in this case is Alice. Because the item is marked as complete under Stephen, any changes that Alice makes are interpreted by the program as changes to Stephen's coding. Alice can make changes and the program will recognize them. If Alice was to uncomplete the coding for this item by changing the properties, Alice would need to make sure that her coding was the correct version before changing it back to complete. Once she completes the coding, her version of the coding becomes the agreed version. The important thing to remember is that the person who completes the coding becomes the owner of the agreed coding. For more information about EpiReviewer 4, please see our other videos or go to the EpiReviewer 4 Gateway. The web address is shown on the screen.